Hey, thanks for tuning again to LeroyScott.com at LeroyScottTV. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that's following me on my uh, Facebook fan page. And everybody has been sending emails. You know, we've got a ton of emails. We actually got thousands and thousands of emails. Um, but I have personally, I personally go through each one of those emails. Um, I've selected a couple of emails that I want to read today and talk about today. And I want to answer your questions. Now, if you haven't sent me a question, it's, it's strictly confidential. You don't have to leave your name or don't give us permission to, um, to you know, bring your question up on, on Leroy Scott TV. But you can send a question and uh, get your question posted to our Leroy Scott TV page so that um, people can hear what we're talking about. But I've got a few emails that I want to address. And we just kind of chose the theme th today for this particular um, shot. We just chose this whole theme of cheating. And I want to help you understand um, how to navigate through difficult situations where people in your relationship or in your marriage have cheated. Um, so our first email comes from a young lady and, um, and it reads like this. My husband tells me that I'm the only one he wants to be with and that he loves me, but I'm having trouble believing it. Cause the same girl he was trying to be with, he added to his Facebook page and had her phone number in his phone. So we got into this really, really big argument and a couple of days, he removed her from his Facebook and deleted her from the phone. Leroy Scott, do you think he's trying to save our marriage or is it a mind game he's trying to play with me? Hey, now that's a very, very good question. I mean, a lot of people may have listened to that and said, well, it's pretty simple. Here's what you do. But in essence, I mean, when you really love somebody and you've been with them that long, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to, to make a decision as to what you need to do. Um, the reality of the, of the deal is, um, is the question I think she asked. And that question is, you know, is he, is he playing a mind game with me or is he really wanting to save his marriage? Listen, when a man is interested in saving a marriage, there's one thing he does. He saves his marriage, changes his life. He focuses on the things that are most important. And if it's a relationship that, that would be you. So is he playing a game? I'm not sure if he's playing a mind game. You can only play mind games with people for which you can play mind games with. So maybe it's not a mind game. Maybe it's a reality. Maybe what he's done is what he does. And maybe what he's done is what, he's done, what he does because you let him do it. So you've got to set some boundaries. You've got to let him know that these are the rules. These are the things that I expect in this relationship. And don't reinforce negative behavior. So you can have what you want. He can stop playing games with your mind if you set boundaries in your mind and set rules in your relationship. The next lady um, wrote an email and this was her question. I want you to check it out. When a man you find staring at you, smiling, talking to you, just cordial, being friendly, but respectful. My question is, why doesn't the guy come and talk to me? Why doesn't he approach me? Why are men so afraid of me? Wow, that's a cool question, and I'm going to put it out on the table. Um, you know, a lot of times men don't come and talk to you because they're just simply downright scared. <laughs> that's right, I said it, man. They're scared. They don't, they're scared. Um, they don't want to be rejected. Um, your presentation, your demeanor, and all of that stuff just simply intimidates the guy. But this is the deal. Why wait for him? If you see the guy and you're attracted to the guy, there's nothing wrong with you having a conversation with that guy. There's nothing wrong with you saying, hey, what's your name? You see, I think that we just stereotype men and women so bad that women actually miss the opportunity to meet great men. Because a great man might be a man who's going to check you out, but he may not, may not approach you, may not talk to you. Because he's trying to fill you out, trying to look at you, trying to watch you, and trying to build up the strength in order to go and, um, and approach you. But there's nothing wrong with you approaching him and just asking the guy, um, why didn't you come up to me? Um, if you like what you saw. So you go up to him. Check this next question out. And it's uh, coming from a really, really young lady um, who's very young. And, um, and we appreciate her email. So check it out. She says, I am 18 years old, um, an engaged mother of a seven-month-old baby boy and a four-year-old stepson. Our family needs your help. I have been depressed since I was like six months pregnant um, when he cheated on me and everything has sort of fallen apart. I am filled with anger, hatred, worry, fatigue, stress. I want to be able to put everything behind me, but my head will not let me, exclamation point. My heart loves him, but my head doesn't um, allow me to love him. 
I can't keep living like this. I want to just crawl into a hole and die. Wow, you are so young and it's got, you've got so much responsibility on your plate. It's, it's got to be hard. Um, so this is what we're going to do. My, my answer to your question is this. You've got to prioritize, right? Now, I know that you hit a spot in depression when you were pregnant and your husband cheated on you. Um, but I also know that you got some significant stuff going on where you don't even want to live anymore. You're tired, you're fatigued. You've got all the signs and symptoms of depression. So we're going to prioritize. Before we try to save your marriage, you need to save yourself. So instead of rolling over and dying, you need to roll your way into getting some help. And if you can do that, then I promise you they'll build a network around you of people that can get involved in your life and really help. You know, sometimes you got to put marriage on the back burner so that you can take care of you. And that's why I want to suggest that you prioritize your life right now because your children need you. There's so much more in life for you. And you're going to figure it all out, but you got to start with the most important things. And maybe for the first time in your life, you make yourself the most important thing. I want you to check this email out from this next young lady. I've been with my husband for eight years. We've been married for three, and he has cheated on me more than once. Every time he cheats, I stay. He's fathered two children outside of our marriage, and he's also cheated in my home. He says he loves me, but I just don't know what to believe at this point. I really want to leave, but I don't know if that would be the best choice. Um, I know that I will never be able to get over this. I'll no, never be able to forgive him for all that he's done to me. And by the way, we don't have any children together. What do you suggest? Wow, that is a lot. I mean, I know a lot of people out there say, well, we don't need Leroy Scott to answer this one. I can do this one. And, and girl, you need to get out. This is not love, right? This is not love. But who knows? It could be. It could be. What you've got to understand about relationships is, is this, right? You're reinforcing some of the behavior that's causing him to do what he's doing. So what do you got to do? You got to set some boundaries. You got to set some rules for that relationship. And those rules need to be understood. And if he doesn't abide by the rules, then you break the rules, you broke, break the heart, and then you break the relationship. Now, one of the things you said is that you can't get over it. And I understand that. You'll never get over it unless you get under it. And to get under it means to take responsibility for it, to, to, to carry the burden of it in a way that you don't want to carry the burden anymore. And you're going to do something about it. I think you and him need to sit down and we need to say, this is going to be a marriage. It's going to be a loving relationship. You're just expressing your heart. But when you express your heart, you got to express your heart with boundaries. And I promise you, he'll respect you for that. And um, again, you really can get over it. You can go to my website, www.leroyscott.com, and I have the perfect tool, Unbreaking Heart. So if you want to stay in that relationship, you can't stay the way you are. There's a lot of healing that needs to go on, and there's a lot of boundary setting that needs to go on. People that respect and love each other, they live their life with boundaries in that relationship. Listen, thank you so much for all of your emails. I really appreciate reading the emails. We kind of focused on cheating as a theme, but we've got a whole lot of other things. I promise you're going to hear some of these uh, people's stories are just going to be a testimony. We've got guys calling in. Um, and emailing us and sending us stuff. We're going to put some of that stuff on Leroy Scott TV. I'm hoping that these things and these questions, these are everyday questions that everyday people have. Some of them, some of them seem very simple. Some are, are very complex, but they're all meant to be a blessing to the people that are watching Leroy Scott TV. We're waiting for your emails. If you'd love to send us an email or you want to send us an email, go to www.leroyscott.com. Click on the Contact Us uh, link on that page and go ahead and send your email. Don't forget, there's a ton of products on the website. I want, to, want you to get your hands on them. And for all of you that are following the Leroy Scott fan page on Facebook, I appreciate you so much. If you're not, make sure you get connected. God bless you and God keep you from Leroy Scott TV. <music>